you're from Boston, Massachusetts. Right. Hip hop in the nineties, I mean, you know, let's just call it what it is. Boston is is it's not a a a a black town for that matter. You're doing hip hop. Like you had to work your way out of there. You had to work your way to be noticed. What was it like for you focusing on this this art form of hip hop in the 90s in Boston? You know why I'm so happy you asked that question is because most people don't understand how that was a struggle. And then also me being white. Exactly. The thing I struggled is like to some people an oxymoron. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, so it's kind of like, yo, all the odds were against me. You know what I'm saying? Like, first of all, at that time, it was New York and it was black. Like, that was what hip hop was, right? White, if you were white, you were either called Vanilla Ice or, you know, then, you know, later on, you'd be called Eminem in the early 2000s. But like, you didn't get the respect, no, you considered. And some people didn't even want to invite you to the party. You know what I'm saying? They didn't even want you at the party. So, um, you know, it was weird because when I was a kid, ever since I was a kid, since I was 10, I was a hip hop fan, right? So like, you know, my first album my mother got me for Easter was Run DMC, you know, Rockbox album, right? So like, that's all I knew. So even like, like when Public Enemy and X-Clan and all these like groups, KRS-One, that I'm like a super fan of and I'm listening to, like, I went to the, to the, like, yo, is it okay for me to wear an African medallion? <laughs> I, I, didn't, you know, I just loved the culture and what it meant. It wasn't black or white. It was just dope, right? And, like, that's what I always looked at at life. Like, I never looked at life as colors. I looked at it as, like, either you're a dick or you're not a dick. And that's how I looked at life, right? Yeah, so, it's a great way to look at life. But I really wanted to pull out the fact of what you awesome. have been saying all along. Yeah. All of the odds were stacked against you. Just trying yeah. to get into this culture, into this music industry, as a white guy in hip hop in the mid '90s. So I got, I got, a lot of I, got I got a story that you're gonna love being a New Yorker and being in the music business this long. So when Power 105 in New York first launched, mm -hmm. uh, I got the call. Nobody knows this, right? Uh, I think I posted on Instagram one time, but like nobody knows this story. Like I got the call from the program director, come to New York. We want to talk to you about being on Power 105. I go to New York and I sit down with them. And it was like, yo, we need somebody dope to go against Funkmaster Flex at the same time slot on Power 105. We want to give that to you. So, you know, at that moment, I'm like, oh my God, I made it. You know what I mean? This is crazy. I'm getting a New York radio slot. That's the top of the pile. If you're on New York radio, you can't get any higher than that. You know what I'm saying? Like in the mid 2000s, early 2000s, mid 2000s. So I'm like, first of all, I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. This is crazy. This is crazy. Right? Like, and then after like, I let the excitement simmer down a little bit during this meeting, I started thinking to myself, like, I don't know if this is a smart move for me. Um, so, and now anybody in their right mind would take that slot. You agree? Absolutely. So I'm in New York. I just got off of the position at Power 105 to go against Funk Master Flex. So I end the meeting by saying, by the way, I just want for people, because people right now watching might not understand how big of a deal that is. That's literally like the number one station in the world for hip hop is Hot 97. The number one DJ in the world for breaking hip hop is Funkmaster Flex. The number one city for hip hop is New York. So, like, if you're a New York, if you're a hip hop DJ and you get off of a New York radio slot, there's nothing bigger than that in the entire world for you to be offered. Agreed. Agreed. One hundred percent. So I'm there. I get offered that slot. So I so can I think about this? And they kind of look at me like, what the fuck? Who needs to think about an offer like this? So I thought about it, and I concluded that it's not the right move for me to make. Uh, like another chapter in my book, just because you could doesn't mean you should. And I'll explain why. First of all, I'm a white guy from Boston coming to New York, a city that is on Flex's back in a, in a, with, where he breaks everybody in hip-hop. 
a city that he built, right? A black dude from New York on the number one hip hop station from a white dude from Boston, which ultimately is New York's arch enemy, you know what I'm saying? Who has no credibility next to Funkmaster Flex. Do you know what I'm saying? So I'm thinking, if I go there, I'm gonna get ran out of New York. My legacy will be stained with being ran out of New York and I will look like a cornball. No matter if I can outwit him, no matter if I can outskill him, no rapper or record label is going to be on Team Clinton <laughs> when it is against Flex. So it's like I have nothing, no weaponry to even go against this dude in his fucking city. And you know, so that was number one. But the, the also parallel was I had so much respect for Flex because people like me wouldn't even be here if it wasn't for what he's done. I don't even want to ever be put in a position where I have to do anything that looks like I'm disrespecting this dude. Because by disrespecting him would be disrespecting the very thing that made me, me. And you know what I'm saying? So it's like, why would I go after somebody that's done so much to open the doors to somebody like me? So I suggested, after I told them that I'm gonna pass on that job going against Flex, I suggested that they go and get DJ Clue. And that's how DJ Clue got that slot on Power 105. Wow. Really? Does Clue know that story? Nobody knows that story except you now. <laughs> and, and when this releases, I will make sure that Clue knows that. Big up to Clue. He's done yeah, so much. Like, yeah, right the only person that would make any sense going against Flex that has the same credibility, the same reputation, you know, the same support of New York uh, in hip hop. The only person that would make sense is DJ Clue. You guys should go get DJ Clue. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.